So, <laughs> this is. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> One of the ways that have helped me heal some of this. And then the friends that I had in Mixer and comments, you know, I'm trying to keep a good posture and stuff. And one of my friends once made a comment like, why are you trying to show off so much? Insecurities that I have is by talking to someone that I trust. And I sat down with Chaz because he's like an open book. He does not sugarcoat anything. And if you know him, he'll tell you what it is. But I sat down to talk to him about some of the things that he goes through from his perspective and what he went through with his life. That also helped me see that I'm not the only one going through this. And there's people like himself that went through something similar. So I'm gonna share that with you guys. And you let me know in the comments if you resonate, if you have any questions, or if you just wanna have, you know, share your opinion on this because at the end of the day, I mean, we all can relate somehow, so. Okay, ready? You ready? Okay. <laughs> The last time we spoke about it, you mentioned as women, we tend to open ourselves up to these conversations and these topics of conversations, but then there's not a lot of from a men's perspective. And I think it would be fair for, for you to show and explain to us, like, what is it like for you? Uh, well, for, for me personally, it was the opposite of what you dealt with because i was never the chubby guy i was yeah. the exact opposite you yeah. know so but when, when it came to everything else it was like yeah i was born here um but i got brown skin yeah. you know so in the first few years of my life it wasn't a problem because my family lived in a, in a lower income neighborhood yeah. you know so i went to from preschool to second grade i went to school with people that had similar skin color as me yeah. you know and then third grade and for the rest of my uh, school life, it was a lot of Caucasian, a lot of white people, you know? So it was like, all right, I feel different all of a sudden, <laughs> you know? Um, and being that skinny, even the earliest memories I have, I was second grade, third grade, I was wearing sweatpants and sweatshirts during the summertime. Yeah. Because I was skinny and hairy. And so I was like, I did not feel comfortable at all around other people, <clears throat> you know, yeah. and, and that stuck with me for a while. And then it kind of shifted, but then during high school, I did, I wouldn't say that I got bullied, but I would say that I didn't have a lot of friends. And then the friends that I had make certain comments, you know, I'm trying to keep a good posture and stuff. And one of my friends once made a comment like, why are you trying to show off so much? <laughs> I was like, I got nothing to show up. What are you talking about? Yeah. You know, like you're just you're standing you're, too straight up. Like you're you're trying to puff up your chest. Really? And I was just trying to keep good posture. And so that fucked with my head, and then I just I started slouching one. Is that where it all started? Yeah. Oh shit. You know, and it was just and wrestling. Like it, high school was like the big time where it was. I realized how skinny I was because there was other athletes that weren't skinny yeah and then i was like oh okay and then i joined the wrestling team and wrestling is all about weight you know so i weighed myself i was 108 pounds i was like all right and then i'm looking around the wrestling room and it's like i'm the second to the smallest guy here Damn. and everyone else is 20 30 pounds heavier than me you know so that's when it all started with the whole not being comfortable in my own body for a bunch of different reasons. Damn. I remember in high school, mm -hmm. you know, we always had like a cheerleading cheerleading mm -hmm. team. And I saw the girls and all of them were, you know, skinny and petite. And I was like, I, I never really wanted to be around that because I was too uncomfortable because I felt ugly. Yeah. Like I was not like that. And they had a lot of confidence in themselves and I did it. Mm -hmm. So I, I used to pull, pull myself away from just 
being around a lot of people anyway because I didn't I didn't want to be part of that you know will be made fun of the first comment that I remember it was one from a boy and I had a crush on him <laughs> and then I don't know what I said to him I think I said hi to him but the first thing that he did when he saw me he's like <laughs> 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 and the king was like this. Like, <laughs> I was like, bro, like I like you, you know, like why are you gonna be so mean? Mm -hmm. So then never says, like, I feel so shy because it's like I look like Frida Kahlo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like motherfucker. <laughs> so then ever since I, I feel really uncomfortable. Like I didn't I didn't like the way that it looked. So yeah. you know, but I mean that's that's that sucks. Did you specifically like surround yourself with certain people or did you just like isolate yourself from people or how was that like how did that influence your um your environment or the people that you used to talk to? Well it just it, it put me at the rejects table in the cafeteria. Yeah. You know, yeah. so our it, it was a group of people that just it was a different group every year. Damn. And it was just everybody else that didn't have anywhere else to sit. <laughs> You know, yeah. when I entered high school, I had uh, I went to the same high school as a lot of my friends from grammar school. Yeah. You know, so I had my group going into high school, but then they started hanging around with some weird people that I just wasn't vibing with. You know, yeah. so it's just that's the second year I was like, I went into the cafeteria not knowing where where I was gonna sit until so someone that I had met the previous year from that group of friends is like. I don't have anywhere to sit either. So we kind of just sat Aww. and then just over time, like more and more people sat at the table and it was just a bunch of people that just didn't fit into any other of the groups. Why do you think you were, you were a person that you didn't fit in? <clears throat> oh, a bunch of reasons. You know, I, I felt like I was too, once I got to high school and there were, you know, I went to Loyola Academy, so that's up in the Northern su suburbs. Mm -hmm. An expensive school. Why I went there? Because I wanted to be with my friends and had to twist my parents' arms about it. Um, you know, but there was actually more people of color than in my my grammar school. So, but at that point, I realized I was too white for the colored people, and then I was too brown for some of the white people. What? You know, and then I was on the wrestling team, but. I never really hung out with the other wrestlers. I never, you know, it, I, I wasn't the best wrestler. It took me two months to get my first win. Mm. Um, so I, I wasn't necessarily able to sit with the cool Latinos and I wasn't able to sit with the cool white people and I wasn't able to sit with the athletes. But then I liked working out, so I didn't necessarily fit in with the people that were anti-athletes. So it was just... I never knew where I got along with people. I was able yeah. to talk to people from all the different groups, but it was just a group to fit in with. I just I, I didn't feel that. Um, and so even like for example for me, I I I went through something similar where I didn't find my own group because even when I was in the ROTC like I wasn't like too close to the people that were in there mm -hmm. because they had the hierarchy you know the the main ones are the ones that have been there for the longest have have done our see for like the four years and then then it just goes in in um, hierarchy levels so I was not really one of those people that had that much confidence either because it's like okay I haven't been there for too long I think it was my first or second mm -hmm. year so I was always going back and forth and then me trying to find a group specifically, like I struggled just, yeah. just even talking to people and being okay with being myself. Like you did, you did, at least you were yourself, you know, yeah. with uh, your friends to, or to a certain extent. Yeah, there, there what was, do you mean? What there, to a certain there extent? There were still some things, you know, I, I try to play a cool guy that, you know, I, I try to make it seem like I wasn't awkward or anything. I try to yeah. try to portray confidence, but I didn't have confidence, you know, mm. and just, I was able to convince some people and the friends that I think that I ended up sticking with, I think they knew that. And, yeah. you know, out of that group, uh, Samantha's the only one that I really still talk to, yeah. you know, because the group in high school that I really clicked with, there was four of us to talk about this, uh, in the podcast with her. Yeah. Um, but it was, me it was her she's 
half white, half Mexican. Mm, not athletic. She's she was a smart one. She was a scholar. Yeah. And then it was our friend Carrie, who's six foot tall white girl. <laughs> uh, she she row she did crew, the rowing of the boat stuff. <laughs> okay. And then Sanusi, who was from Africa and he played soccer. He was about my height. You know, so it was four completely different people, but we're the ones that meshed well together, and we were the ones that kind of had each other's back in high yeah. school. Hmm. But even with them, it was, like I, I never really spoke with it to Samantha because she's the one that I talked to of what she believed and what she didn't, and mm -hmm. we kind of just never talked about it. And she just now accepts; she sees the growth that I've had and accepts me for who I am now. Because back then, it was just a whole lot of stories that wow. I would tell. Yeah, so you've had friends, long-time friends, yeah. loyal friends from high school that you met. Did you meet in high school? Yeah. You met in high school, right? And then you're still friends with them. Mm -hmm. So with me, I, I never got attached because the friends that I did have at some point, I just, I just never really fully trusted them. I mean, I felt like they will backstab me and at the end of the day, a lot of them did or didn't really have good things to say about me or if they did i just never found the realness with them you know because you know when you meet people sometimes like you can tell who's real and who's yeah. not i didn't have that with them like they it was always a front it was always like let me look cute and then or it was some it was some, always something and then the only true friend that i i did have see i even forgot her name <laughs> <laughs> What because a true I friend. no, because remember what I told you? Like I, I, I do forget stuff like from my past and stuff. Yeah. Like the only true friend that I did have, like at the end of the day, like I, I was too scared to get attached to her because of the history that I had. Mm -hmm. You know, we left from Mexico, so then when I came to the United States, I'm like, okay, maybe these friends are not gonna last either. Mm -hmm. So why even get attached to them? You know, in the first place. But you, you have your friends now, and then did they they got to see those stages yeah. that you went through mm -hmm. did they ever like call you out on that like how was that that might have been the reason why we we stuck together is because they're the ones that never really mentioned anything about me being short me being skinny me being brown or anything like that yeah you know so it was kind of just going with it you know they they knew that i wrestled they never came to any of my wrestling matches and mm -hmm. I never asked them to come because I didn't think of things like that. Like our, our friendship really started to take its its shape once we graduated. Yeah. You know, because when we were in school, it was like, all right, we're just going to hang out because we all come to the same school. Yeah. But then once we all kind of started scattering from college, mm. it was like, all right, now we actually have to put in work. Yeah. To see each other, you know, and we did a few times of the, the four of us together. And then since then, it's kind of been, you know, it was four of us and then it was three of us. And then it's, you know, Samantha and me still, still make sure we have our lunch once a month and stuff. That's nice. But uh, no, especially with her, because she's seen through the dramas that I went through with wrestling when I was getting ready for my fight, when I took over the business, you know, being 105 pounds in high school to 155 pounds now. And we don't make jokes about it. We don't do anything about it, about anything. It was just, she's kind of always been the one that accepted me for, for who I am. You know, and I think that's yeah. ultimately what led us to a 15 year friendship. That's okay. nice. How did you overcome those insecurities though? Like back when you were going through that? Believe it or not, <laughs> I, I'm still finding ways to go through it. I'm very, not so much with the skinniness, but obviously, you know, it's, I've worked on that, you know, yeah. and I, I had goals, you know, being a professional wrestling fan and all the guys that I saw are freaking huge, <laughs> you know, so it's like, that's like, I got to look like that, you know, and, and I, I started my, my weightlifting journey to, with that in mind that I was going to look like Bill Goldberg and over time I was like, you know what, I like hamburgers and tacos too much to look exactly Me like too. <laughs> You know, yeah. but then I, I just fell in love with the process of, of getting stronger because I think <laughs> that's what I really want. I didn't necessarily want yeah. the size, I wanted the strength. Yeah. And at the time I thought it was just physical strength mm -hmm. because I didn't know the amount of mental strength that came with the physical strength. 
mm. and how much mental strength you need to get the physical strength because lifting can get very boring lifting can get very hard yeah you know so if you don't have that mental strength to keep going with it you're not gonna you're not gonna do it you know so for me to get over it was obviously I, I, i've gained the weight i'm 155 pounds now but I, when i look in the mirror i still see that skinny kid you know but i look at the weight that i'm lifting and it's obviously weight that i couldn't lift when i was 105 pounds <laughs> You know, and so, and believe it or not, for someone that has a podcast, I hate my voice. Probably not going to. I'm not going to say I hate my voice. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. No, you like. Know, I watch all these yeah. videos. I probably won't watch this one. Guys. Guys. You, you know, like to so like to like. I, I, think, <laughs> I, I think when it comes to insecurities, I, I, I don't know if they, they go away. But I think we just learn how to deal with them. Yeah. You know, and, and we realize, at least for me, I've realized yeah. that there, there's people, like the friends that I have now, want to be around me because they want to be around me, not because they need me around. Oh. You know, and, and the people that listen to my podcast want to listen to my podcast. They don't care what my voice sounds like because they listen. They listen every week. Yeah. You know, and same thing with everything else. There's like people want to train with me. People yeah. ask me to roll with them. People ask me to spar with them. When before, I didn't get that either. You know, so it's like... And then there's a lot of people that don't listen to my podcast. There's a lot of people that don't like the way that I train. There's people that would rather train with somebody else. And all that's fine. You know, but I focus on the people that want me for me. Yeah. And yeah. it doesn't get rid of the insecurities. But I think it makes it easier to deal with them. Yeah, that's true. I mean, even though I openly talked about that, it doesn't mean I'm completely over them. Yeah. Um, like you said, with you looking yourself in front of the mirror, you see that skinny kid with me. <laughs> I see that fat girl. Like, <laughs> and I don't want to say fat girl because it wasn't even like I was fat. It was just the fact that I was chunky, mm -hmm. you know, and then chubby. And so it's like, yeah, I had some belly. Yeah, I had some of that. But then because of all these things that were put in my head i used to think otherwise so then when i see myself it's like oh i still need to lose this because my belly is growing or something like i gotta lose something so then that pushes me to continue to drain yeah and put my put myself out there and continue to talk and just express myself mm -hmm. so i don't feel those insecurities all the time or at least let them control my decisions and i think we talked about that in the past how you did tell me like at the end of the day whoever watches my content is gonna stick around and if they don't comment i mean many times the people that train here at the gym they don't comment on your classes being so wonderful but then they come in consistently yeah. and i and i think that i have that i have an audience that just watches me, you know and even though they don't comment on my stuff like they're just watching they're watching you know and if they get something from it cool you know, if not, then it's okay too, but they're still watching. So I still appreciate it, you know, as much as, as, as much as I get, like, I get really uncomfortable. I feel like I'm going to cry or something. I mean, uh, I still get to that discomfort because I'm a little bitch, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to just <laughs> quit on myself like that, you know, so thank you for sharing that part. <laughs> And just say, <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, but yeah. No, but I get it because it's like it's still it's, it's a daily thing for me, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's what motivates me. The days that I don't feel like lifting, the days that I'm sore, the days that I yeah. feel like you know, it's just I want to be lazy. It's like no, I, yeah. I remember <clears throat> where I was, and I remember where I don't want to go back to. Yeah, that's you true. You know, and like I said, once <sighs> I fell in love with the process of gaining strength as opposed to just being strong, mm -hmm. then it, that that was a big game changer for me. And then lifting, and this is the past few months has been the most I've that most active I've been again. You know, with my my training routine, and it's like I'm finally happy with the results that I'm getting. But it took me years. I started lifting weights when I was in eighth grade. You know, and yeah. I started training. I wrestled my first match 15 years ago, 16, almost 16 years ago now. Yeah. You know, I've been doing MMA for almost 12 years. And it's just now that I'm getting 
content with the results that I'm getting from all of that. That's good. See, and this is the, the what I said in the last video, like there is a certain training style you gotta go through yeah. for you to achieve that. Yeah. You do body 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 lifting or mm -hmm. body weightlifting. Body exactly. I don't know why I keep the <laughs> love. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> you know the, the, what I do is more skill based, and the body is, is secondary. Mm -hmm. That was my big issue in the beginning because I'm like, okay, what's more important, like the way that I look, or my skills in MMA, or you know, like what do I want? So it all comes with with the price. It all comes out with what you want at the end of the day, right? That, that's what it was for me. That, that was. Part <clears throat> Where, where I made a switch, and that might be where my happiness with my training is coming from. Yeah, Because when that's I good. wanted to be a competitor, and when I was active, a more active competitor, yeah. it was like, I didn't care necessarily about how much I looked. Mm -hmm. It was just, I had to get the skills and the explosiveness to fight. Yeah. You know, but then once I started teaching and coaching, and I was like, hmm, maybe this fight's not actually, you know, okay. fighting's behind me. Yeah. You know, now that I tell people all the time, I, I, I train for one round for the fighters. <laughs> you know, that I just got to be able to give the fighters at least one good round. One yeah. good round, yeah. You know, and, and so that shifted my training and I was able to get the, the mental therapy that I get from lifting weights a little bit more and then just really enjoy training without the pressure of competing. And for me, that was weird. There you go. Good job. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's very simple, but yeah, it's definitely effective. Yeah. And this is... Um, this we is... put so much pressure on ourselves to look a certain way, to be a certain way, to do certain things. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because of the yeah. things that are expected out of us, yeah. either from friends, from family, from social media. Yeah. The second we start focusing on what we want and the things that we enjoy, a lot of those pressures go away. Amen to that, man. Amen mm -hmm. to that. So, see, you, you've had some friends that you've met in high school. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> okay, let me go. I'll be <laughs> that, that shit is funny. <laughs> okay, good job.